progress. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Thursday, August 18th, that is the date. And at 6.32 p.m., this is a meeting of the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. This meeting is called to order. Um, um, I'm the president, Sierra. And uh, with that, we're gonna go to roll call. Fernanda, Secretary Sanchez. Sarah Clendenning. Present. Ben Lansworth. Present. Vincent Chente Montalvo. Present. Fernanda Sanchez, present. Nancy Soto. Present. Benny Madera. Here. Annalie Har. Annalie Har. I'll go back to you. Melanie Bolomo Shiklet. Present. Sorry, present. Uh, Melanie's here too. Dadia Delizer. Present. Diego Zapata. Present. <laughs> Gil Arevalo. Gil Arevalo. Go oh. back to you, Richard. Here, I'm sorry, I was muted. Sorry. Here, Richard. Okay. Steve yeah. Lucero. Here. Esmeralda Landeros. Here. We have quorum. We have quorum. All right. We have quorum. With that, we're going to open it up to item number two. General public comment. If there's anybody from the public who has a comment on something that's not on the agenda, you have two minutes to speak. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on the phone. We have Gilbert Gonzalez. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, board. I just wanted to uh, introduce myself. I am the um, new director at Hazard Recreation Center, and I uh, just wanted to get on and, and introduce myself. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we're able to meet in person one day, but uh, but definitely I'll definitely be on here monthly. Uh, if you guys need anything from me at Hazard Park, you know, reach out to me. Um, I got some good ideas coming up for as far as like Halloween coming up, Breakfast with Santa, and also our programs here at Hazard Recreation Center. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the area, so I'm pretty much familiar with everything around here. So just wanted to say, um, I just wanted to pretty much introduce myself. And if you guys, um, you guys need to reach out, I'm here at Hazard Park. And um, if I can get an email or two, I can, um, you know, send you guys some of our flyers of what's going on here at Hazard. And then also um, my email and phone number so I can be in contact with anybody here on the board, president, vice president, anybody who is, uh, who's on the board. Appreciate your time, guys. Thank you, Gilbert. You can send flyers over to me at fernanda.sanchezlhnc at gmail.com. Thank you, Fernanda. Thank you, Gilbert. Okay, uh, we have two more. Oh, wait, one more. We have Christina Carlos. Hi, hello. Hi, Christina. Is my camera actually on or is no one on camera? Uh, no, the, public's, the public's not on camera. Oh, okay, good. All right, I was hoping I was hoping not. <laughs> I wasn't ready to be on camera. So anyway, I'm just reconnecting. Hello, everyone. Um, I had to drop out for illness and elderly mom. So um, trying to get reconnected and then also kind of miss the boat. I had some problems with my application for the um, for the neighborhood um, purpose grant, and so um, Vincente, I need to. Um, follow up and see about how to apply for the um, for the new years, the new fiscal years grant. Um, I guess is how you would word it. So I just wanted to get some information on that and give me some direction on how to go forward with that. We'll do. I'll make sure to send one out. Right. Thank you, Vicente. Good to see everyone. Don't see any more hands up. Okay. Now we'll move on to item <coughs> three, community and board announcements. If there's anybody from the community who has an announcement, please re raise your hand or press star nine. It's kind of like the public comment, except it's just announcements. So announcements for the board, for announcements for the community, whatever. So raise your hand, press star nine. You have two minutes.
I don't see any hands up. Okay, any board member announcements real quick? Actually, there is a public announcement, Christina. Yeah, it's me again. I just wanted to announce that I know Melanie so sweetly dropped off a breastfeeding, um, a breastfeeding, a breast pump for us and thought of new familia um, when wanting to um, repurpose that. But we at our office the, that we call the Chi Chi Lounge there on Broadway, we offer free lactation support every Friday to the community in partnership with Breastfeed LA. And um, we have lactation students that work with us and lactation student or lactation consultants from the um, from the organization. So it's a service to the community. We have people coming, moms coming from all over LA County. Um, it's really hard to find a free lactation consultant in the community that's community-based. So um, I just would love to be able to um, get that word out to you know Lincoln Heights and our, neighbor, our neighboring community. So however, you guys can also assist me with that. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Okay. So any other uh, community announcements? Board members or community members? Please raise your hand. Okay. None? All right. We're gonna move on to item number four, government reports, two minutes per person. If there's any uh, government official, elected representative or city employee, please raise your hand or press star nine to talk to the community. Two minutes. Don't see any hands up. Okay, and uh, five committee reports. Are there any committee uh, just reports real quick? Updates? I have, I have a report mm -hmm. uh, this from the Alliance of River Communities I, and also for our, our sustainability, not our, well, what was renamed our sustainability, but so I attended the 100 acre partnership event at, um, I forgot the soccer park, but I was disappointed in what I seen. A lot of the people didn't even know about the water being fought for and that we might not have water in the river that the LA river water is being considered to be turned into drinking water. And the wildlife station kept using terms like, you know, natural at natural wildlife, a natural ecosystem. We don't have that there. The LA river was never a natural ecosystem even before it was so it was so dry. So there was a lot of misinformation that I found through there and I brought it up to the attention of a lot of them. They were very open about it, but I could see that they also didn't want to discuss it too much. And I encourage people to attend those events because at this event, there were a lot of people from the different agencies and the only state department agency that was there, well, there was another one, the, the state parks, but was the DTSD. And they also had the uh, toxic maps up. So I will be giving that to everybody. I took some pictures and that's it. Uh, cool, thank you, Vince. Mm. Any other board member um, committee announcements? No? We're going to have a planning and land use committee. Uh, what day is it? Maybe uh, I think next week. All right. Or the week after. But I'll keep everybody posted. <clears throat> uh, okay. So because of time limits, we're going to, and because of quorum, we're going to bump up one of the items here the uh, item 9E. Uh, e. Or sorry, 9D. I'm going to do that right now. And do you have a hand up from the public, Jessica Swan? Okay. Gov Government reports? Yeah, Jessica? Thank you for giving me an opportunity. I think I missed the government report section. I apologize. Again, this is Jessica Swan from the Department of Toxic Substances Control. Um, and Vincent, if you are willing to, if you have not already, if you could forward me any feedback that you have from the event, I'd greatly appreciate that. Um, but I did want to let you all know, I sent out an email earlier today about a work notice for the Welch's property. Um, so I just wanted to mention that that is separate from the work that is occurring at Avenue 34. Um, and it is a separate group that's interested in that property. So I wanted to make you all aware of that. And that's all. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Jessica. Good information. All right, so uh, 
We're going to move on to item number 9D, announcement of LHNC vacancies. I hereby am I'm 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 announcing the vacancies. Business Rep 2025, Business Rep 2023, Community Based Org Rep 2023, Community Based Org Rep 2025, Area 1 Rep at Large 2023, Area 3 Rep at Large 2023, Area 4 Rep Resident 2023, Area 6 Rep Resident 2023, and Youth Rep 2023. Secretary Sanchez, do we have any applications for vacancies? Yes, I've received three applications, two for Area 1 and one for Area 3. Okay, two for area one, one for area three. Okay, so we have uh, Marla is one. So maybe we'll get Marla on the horn, get her on video. Marla, I am promoting you to panelist. Okay, Marla, so uh, Marla, you're applying for area three rep and um, you wrote a statement. Uh, so you get two minutes to uh, introduce yourself to the board and talk about what you're about or what you're into. Um, and then we'll do a uh, board and community community discussion, short discussion. Um, okay. So is it, we can get Marla on video, right? Or does it have- I promoted her to panelist, so she should be able to share her- Okay. Her... If she doesn't want to, so I can put up the timer. If not, I'll just, um, I'll just say when her, the two minutes are up. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Marla and I've lived in the community for three years now and I've met Sarah through um, various people um, and I just am, uh, you know, I've always been uh, interested in, in um, changing the world. <laughs> so this is kind of like why I want to be on the level of where things are talked about and decisions are made. So um, that's why I applied. And then I don't know, I, I guess I can tell a little bit about myself. I, used, I grew up a, a figure skater and was a coach for um, like 14 years after I graduated college. And now I am a production accountant. And so I work in the movies. <laughs> My last uh, show was The Rookie, but it's not out yet, September 23rd. So, and I live in the neighborhood near um, Kentucky Fried Chicken with my little 12 year old multi poo who's sitting under my chair right now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't, I was trying to figure out the, the, uh, the camera and everything. And so I think, and then my uh, speakers are not very loud. So, am I, did you ask me something specific? Is there something else I need to share or, or what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, uh, no, uh, just like what you wrote on the application or like um, what, you, what, is the, what is the question on the application? What are your... Um... Why do you want to be on? Yeah, I mean, I realize like a big thing is transparency and um, I feel like a lot of my neighbors here, since they don't have the internet, they don't have computers, they don't have smartphones, is that they're really left out of a lot of things. Um, I mentioned on my application that some neighbors weren't able to apply for, you know, our um, LADWP um, bills went up quite a bit and there was some funding or whatever to, so that they didn't have to pay as much. But, you know, with COVID, people weren't working in the office, people weren't answering the phone. They, and so they never were able to, um, to get that. I mean, I know, uh, you know, there's the library, of course, but, you know, 75 year olds are, you know, kind of need some help sometimes, but they've never really worked on a computer before. So I just feel like um, there should be more accessibility um, or resources for them to access um, programs. And then as far as like, um, I live in a, an apartment and we all agree that we, um, that our management are considered slumlords. And uh, I went through a big ordeal two years ago trying to get the building uh, free of bugs. And it was, I, I was, um, it was a challenge. And um, time. a lot of people couldn't, um, didn't want to join me in support. And part of it being some of them might not have been paying rent. 
so they didn't want to be kicked out. And I have someone here that um, is not documented. And so she didn't understand that she could, you know, uh, voice concern. And so um, about the, the bug population here. Oh, and time on it. We, Sarah, I would say. Um, okay, so that, that, ask questions. okay, so uh, yeah, that's the two minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so, uh, any uh, so should we go to board member questions first, Vince or community? Yes, this is uh, this is for District One, right? Yeah, District One. I just have, double checked we have it. Two applicants. How many spots do we have? One. Okay, so before we we move on, we have to let the other applicant because it's a one motion. Okay. And then we take a vote. All right. So, um, do you see the so other? Right now, right now, it's if anybody has a question for her from the board. Oh, okay. And then we can go to the public, and then we can bring the the second um, person running for the seat. And if, and if everybody's question could be just real straight to the point, yeah, and then the reply would be just straight to the point, um, one minute or less, yeah. We have Didia. Thank you. My question is general. I thought that we normally saw the applications in our board packet. I didn't. I didn't see any applications this time. So just a clear. Thank you. Esmeralda. Uh, what attracted you to Lincoln Heights? Uh, when I moved here, it uh, it was where I was working. It was two and a half miles. So. Uh, it was price and location as far as it, I, I mentioned my dog. So I wanted to drive home at lunch and not have her be in the kennel for too long. So those are the two reasons. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Um, there's more seats available. So if this doesn't work out, would you consider another seat? Uh, yes. I actually uh, wasn't wasn't sure what I should be um, applying for, so I I figured out that I live in in area one, so I just picked the area one. So yeah, I'm totally open to another one. Thank you, Fernanda. So we have a lot of committees that focus on a lot of pertinent um hot topics happening in the community what's something that is occurring in lincoln heights right now that you want to help resolve or contribute your efforts to housing and homelessness that's a that's the biggest one for me as i see there's empty lots on broadway that aren't being used and people <laughs> and then there's lots of empty apartments in my building and lots of people on the streets. And so I, I feel like they're not util utilizing the area or yeah, the space as well as they could to help people in the community. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Steve. Hi, thanks so much for applying. Um, you mentioned that you would be focusing on um, a couple of things, but do you have any personal uh, uh, skill sets or anything that you could you think would be a huge benefit to uh, either uh, the, the community here? Um, um, I guess um, huge skill sets as far as that. Um, I uh, um, have, have a lot of experience working with children. And so I think that would be great that I could help with, you know, park and rec kind of stuff there um i have accounting experience and everybody you know everything uh is about numbers so but um i don't know what else do i have to offer um i don't know just care and concern i guess for for everybody i mean a lot of fine. what's that yeah that, that's fine that's great okay well yeah i just i mean i really learned to appreciate you know my friends and neighbors recently i had gotten sick and so they all um, joined together to make sure I was fed and that my dog was walked. And, you know, that's, that's amazing to me. And, you know, I love them and they love me and they feed me. And so, yeah, I would love to do anything. Beautiful. Thank you. 
Thank You're you. welcome. All right, so, so we're limited on time here, everybody. It's 6.52. Um, do we have any other uh, board member questions for Marla? Any? Okay, any attendee questions for Marla? If you're an attendee and you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand or press star nine. Daisy. Uh, Marla, uh, it sounds like you're interacting with your neighbors. Have you discussed with them how do they feel about the homelessness issue and the vacant lot issue? Um, only uh, just that we're all trying to avoid gentrification, but not, I mean, I, I've stated my, my feelings about uh, property value is that my question is this, is that, okay, so if you bring a homeless shelter into your neighborhood, your property value goes down, but how much does the property value go down when you have tents and lots of homeless walking around? I mean, in my street, Broadway, workmen, I see human feces. And so I don't, you know, I'm, there's a house uh, for sale two doors down um, that nobody's coming to look at. So <laughs> I just, so, so that kind of thing, it's just kind of in passing, but nothing about um, what should we do about it or how do you feel? Thank you. I don't see any more, Sarah. Okay. Um, so then we will go to the next applicant for area one. Uh, Fernanda, I don't know the name though. Next applicant is Sylvia Lara. Sylvia Lara, if you are on the meeting, please raise your hand so that I can promote you to panelist. Sylvia Lara. Hmm. Darn, okay. I don't see her on the meeting. Um, when I did respond to all the applicants, I let them know that their items were towards the end of the agenda and that they would be on sometime after seven. So maybe that's why she's not on the meeting yet. Okay. Um, so I guess in the interest of fairness, could we screen share her application? Yeah. Well, we, can't, we can't show the application on because it has oh, additional information. Well, everybody has to have an equal opportunity in presenting. So we might have to table this one till the end if Sylvia, Sylvia comes up. Right, Vince? We can. And then we have another applicant, right, for area three. For area three, that's correct. Um, Jared Gunsberg, who is on the meeting right now. Okay, so maybe we're going to um, just wait, wait on area one, right, Vince? So they get yeah, we can wait until the meeting comes and then bring it back up. But okay. I think we should reach out to the uh, second applicant if we can and see if we can get them on because we can always readdress the item right away as soon as they're present and the- uh... Right on. Okay, so we'll hit them up in the interim. And then we'll, okay, so uh, Marla, we're gonna wait on this one uh, till later in the meeting. Yeah? Yeah, and we can move we're... on to the next one. Yeah, area three. So Jared Gunsberg, area three. Jared, you've been promoted. I'll start the time as soon as he starts talking. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my timer on as well. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Jared Gunsberg. I live on the uh, western frontier of newly created CD14 and in Area Three. Um, I am a relatively new resident of Lincoln Heights. I've been here since November of 20. I live here with my wife and kid, and I have worked in this neighborhood for about 15 years. Um, I work as an attorney. Um, specifically, I'm a criminal defense attorney, and I have worked with the youth who are detained at Central Juvenile Hall uh, for, for 15 years. I'm, I am a regular there. Um, Part of why I have applied and, and would be happy to serve if, if needed is that uh, the kids at, at Eastlake, the kids at Central are part of this community as well. Um, and 
there are myriad problems facing Lincoln Heights. So this isn't to put anything on a, on a hierarchy. Uh, that is an issue that I um, care very much about. And seeing how the neighborhood council with sort of the power that this configuration of a neighborhood council is harnessed so quickly, um, what can be done on the grassroots level to uh, look at conditions of confinement, to look at the existence at all of why uh, the juvenile hall exists, to look at the role of USC in the property around there. So there are some things um, on that end. That was really the, the inspiration uh, for me to see if I could get involved. Um, beyond that, I have a long history of um, organizing work and coalition building. Um, I've worked extensively pre-pandemic uh, with Ben the Ark, um, which is an organization. It's a progressive Jewish organization that builds a lot of coalitions. I worked on one of the early incarnations of bail reform. My time is up. I will ask, that's what happens when you get a lawyer. Anyway, uh, I will answer plenty of questions and I have a candidate statement that I enclosed as well. Thank you, Jared. Okay, so any board member questions for Jared? Please raise your hand. Yeah, I have a question. Um, Jared, thank you for applying and for showing interest in joining our board. Um, as you know, most of us did start with grassroots organizing as well. Um, I'd like to know what your opinion is about um, the gentrification happening in Lincoln Heights, as it is a multifaceted complex social phenomena that has um, affected many aspects of Lincoln Heights. Um, and I'd like to know what your opinion on that is. Well, I, I, I think I'm trying to narrow that down because that is a very broad question. Um, but I'll answer it, I'll answer it broadly and generally, which is that you can't have, I don't think that there can be mass displacement and expect any kind of continuity with any community. Um, if people are being displaced. Um, I'm obviously new here. Um, I bought a house here. I lived in rent stabilized housing my entire adult life. And I'm a little older than you may think. And I um, would, the way I see it now is that without housing equity, um, without business equity, without opportunity equity, um, we're not gonna, we're, we're just gonna end up sliding backwards even worse than we are, not just Lincoln Heights, but all of LA. And what I am hopeful for is that the community can become more, that I can help in any way I can for people to just become more empowered uh, to, to make sure that there's, there's fairness. Um, I think for me as a homeowner now, uh, I have a moral imperative. I, I don't get to say, well, I own a house now and I lived in rent control for decades and now, now I'm someone else's problem. I think it's the opposite. Um, and, and, and as far as gentrification broadly, um, like I said, it's, it's housing displacement to me is, is, the, real, is the real issue um, and uh, businesses as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other board member questions for Jared? I have one. So as a criminal defense lawyer, you know how broken the system is and you work mm -hmm. with the youth and you understand how target the, how the tar how the system targets them and the impurities and impurities that are within the legal system. And one of our hot topics that we have even with housing is our LAPD. And so a lot of people have the questions in the community of whether people are pro-cop or anti-cop. And I think that's important as well as housing being the two top tickets because most of our community has been affected by the, the legal system and also by the policing system. And sometimes I've known that, you know, it brings trauma to them and an understanding of whether who's representing them or not as we're seeing a big, big progressive movement forward I think that's important for us to take into consideration because it, we are, this seat is serving the public and in Lincoln Heights. Thank you. 
So I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite, was there a question on that? What's the question? <laughs> What's the question? The basic question is, um, do you support the abolishment of the police or not? And if not, why? Well, is I am on the front lines uh, of seeing um, police violence used against communities. I not only work with kids, I, I work in the federal system, I work in the state system, I work with adults. Um, so as far as whether I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pro, I'm pro public safety, but I believe that public safety encompasses the public being safe from the police. Um, as far as abolition, I, I don't, I have spent, I have spent the past five, six years really trying to understand what that means. I'm giving you a very honest answer. Um, I organized the uh, pro bono legal counsel after the George Floyd uprising. Um, I have successfully fought the Beverly Hills City Council and the Beverly Hills Police when they passed an ordinance saying that there shouldn't be protesting or you can protest, but you can't make noise in public. Um, and I think it's complex. I can't say, and I'm not trying to dodge the question. I really don't know. I do think that we need to have a approach it from a public health and public safety problem in that the, the police need to have a very narrow and defined role. And I think what, for instance, what council member Hernandez is doing in Colorado right now, council member elect Hernandez is doing in uh, Colorado right now, um, or was there um, looking at the model to have it be more of a social service intervention. Uh, I think that's really promising. So do I think there is a role for police in society? I do. And I think that we need to figure out what that role is and what that looks like. Clearly what we're doing now um, is, is not working. We had a very narrow window in the, in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder. And um, we've all seen the backlash. We've seen it, we've seen it whiplash back. And now we're trying to push it forward the other way. So, you know, that, that, that's what I got. But I guess it's a long winded way of saying is I don't know what police abolition really means. Thank you. Okay, any other board member questions for Jared? Okay, we're gonna open it up to uh, public questions. Any attendees, if you have a question for Jared, please raise your hand or press star nine. If not seeing any. All right. So uh, I guess we'll go for a vote now. Secretary Sanchez. All right. So the vote is to approve Jared Gunsberg's application for Area Three representative. Uh, one second. Sarah Clendenny. Yes. Ben Wadsworth? Yes. Chente Montalvo? No. Uh, Nancy Soto? Yes. Benny Madera? Yes. Annalie Har? Yes. Melanie Bolomo? Yes. Didier Delizer? Yes. Diego Zapata? Yes. Gil Arevalo? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Dale. Steve Lucero? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. Esmeralda Landeros. Yes. And Fernanda Sanchez. Yes. That's 13 yeses, one no. Motion carries. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
Jared, the Area 3 resident rep. Congratulations, Jared. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You will be receiving an onboarding email from me uh, before the end of the week. Um, so I'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thank you, Jared. One more thing for Jared. Uh, he can stay. And we don't have no funding, but since you're officially elected, you can count as form, so you can stay for the meeting. Um, okay, I will. Thank you. All right. So um, we're going to move on to the next item, which was item six, presentations. Item 6A, tenants of Mission Valley Terrace Apartments at 4001 North Mission Road, who had their uh, rent increased by Riverside Charitable Charitable Corporation. Mission Village Terrace is a low-income housing tax credit, 84-unit low-income senior apartment building on Mission and North Broadway. Presenter, Lincoln Heights Tenants Union and the Mission Village Tenants Association. So that'll be Jesse, uh, one of the attendees there. Sarah, do we have a time? Is it still two minutes? Um, the presentation, uh, maybe like five minutes. It's the tenants and Jesse telling the story of what's going on. Okay, so five minutes. Let me just adjust okay. the time. Okay, we're ready. we're ready to go. Point of order really, really quickly. Um, I communicated with the other applicant for area one. She said she wouldn't be able to log on for another 45 minutes. So should we table this for the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so yeah, Marla, we're gonna table this for the next meeting. Okay, um, so Jesse, there's Jess, Mr. Jess. Fernandez, he's, would you speak? Jesse, you've been promoted. Thank you so much. Jesse, hey. So can you give us a little synopsis of what's going on over at Mission Village Apartments? And do we have any other um, tenant representatives on the line? Um, you know, I can't see who's um, on the line, but uh, Isabel, maybe if you're there, and anyone else from uh, Mission Villa, if you want to raise your hand, I'm sure our council people could uh, yeah. promote you as well. Um, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's an Espanol. Uh, Fernanda, could you say it's Spanish? Her hands up. Okay. There, there's multiple. How about it, Isabel? Okay. Um, well, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I want to save, if there's a time limit, I want to save all the time for the tenants from uh, the Mission uh, Villa Apartments to speak for themselves. Um, really fortunate to have met uh, my neighbors at the Mission Villa building at a local meeting of the Lincoln Heights Tenants Union. Um, their situation, um, is complicated. Uh, they are exempt from a lot of housing protections because of being designated affordable housing. And um, there's a lot of questions we need uh, answered, especially about things like covenants or what is entailed in it being affordable housing. Um, but even larger uh, than those minutia is uh, really this kind of mass displacement. This is even bigger than a single homeowner on a block. This is 84 units of families, long-term community members who will face, uh, you know, swift and immediate displacement, if not extreme financial hardship, because their cost of living will go up by between 40 or 50 percent if uh, the landlord is allowed to carry out this uh, rent gouging he's proposed. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'll, I just want to, you know, yield my time to have the tenants speak for themselves that they've begun to organize a tenants association um, and figure out how to respond uh, both to the landlord and um, uh, politically. 
Okay. Cool. So we'll go to the tenant. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, where is she? Isabel. Yes. Hi. Hi. Did you want to tell the story? Yes, I hear, but I don't really understand too much uh, English. Español. Yeah. No hay problema. Si quiere este, um, comunicar lo que ha pasado en el edificio de usted, um, de cómo le han subido la renta a ustedes, um, veo aquí a Mr. Turcios. No sé si él está con usted. No. Sí, nos, nos está afectando porque no nos negamos a que nos aumenten, pero que sea razonable el aumento porque como los... Lo, nos ha afectado lo del trabajo. No podemos pagar 500 dólares nomás porque ellos dicen que tenemos que pagar ese dinero. Okay. She's saying that she's not denying that they shouldn't, uh, uh, the rent increase, but is fighting against the amount of the rent increase, which is well over the 10% that is allowed. Um, they have proposed to raise everybody's rent $500 a month each, which is a substantial amount of money that has affected them economically as they've been affected by their job situation. Um, Isabel, ¿el edificio de ustedes es de bajo recurso? Um, yo en este apartamento tengo tax credit. Mm -hmm. Um, their apartment building is a sort of subsidized low-income building. Um, and I mean, I would have to look more into about how that exempts them from various laws. I know that one was just passed for January 1st, 2020. That's statewide. Um, I have a supporting document of all the council files for this actual pro this property. I was trying to find the covenant term. So it's a, it's a document of four council files as a supporting document that indicates how many of the percentage was supposed to be covenanted and how much goes to the low income and the seniors. That's what we got to tap into. Uh, the covenant expired on this, I guess. Yeah. So um, no. 36 seconds. Isabel, ¿hay otra cosa que gustaría usted comunicarse de lo que están este, pasando ustedes ahí en ese edificio? Por ejemplo, si todas las utilidades están bien, el, si el manager les arregla lo que necesite. Eh. Tardó un año, como un año tardó en arreglarme. Mm. Hicieron es, un hoyo en, en el techo para destapar un baño de arriba y tardaron un año, pero... Todavía no lo, no lo han arreglado por completo. Okay. She's saying that the property owner does not fix um, the issues that are happening in the building. There's been a hole over their roof for over a year um, in attempts to fix a clogged bathroom, but it hasn't been fixed and that's been over a year. Um, so it looks like we have a landlord here who, um, is not providing habitable dwelling and is increasing the rent a substantial amount. Lo arreglan, pero tardan mucho para arreglarlo, pero no lo arreglan como debe de ser. No más le tapan así, pero no lo arreglaron bien. She's saying that they take a long time to fix any issues in the apartments, and when they do fix it, it's um, just shady uh, jobs and it's not done properly or correctly. Tara, I said we extend it like another minute so we can get uh, Mr. Tostillos on. Okay. Is he part of the tenants, um, Fernando? I'm not familiar with that name. Jesse, is he part of the tenants? I just want to make sure. Before Jesse, is Mr. Tostillos part of the tenants? Association? Yeah, uh, I, I, I think so, um, but uh, please just promote him and check yeah, in. Yeah, just check. He has his hand right here. Mr. Tercius, you are unmuted. 
Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, I'm uh, one of the tenants here uh, at Mission Village. I'm uh, one of the first person that started, you know, organizing all the neighbors here, all the tenants. So I had done so far, I had done all I can to to see what could be done about this issue. Because, uh, you know, we had, we received a letter of rent increase. I filed a complaint with the Department of Housing, but so far, you know, the response that I got from them was that they have every right to do that due to the fact that they're not under the RSO or the AB 1482. And uh, I also got in contact with uh, um, one of the representative of Kevin De Leon. He's, he's been in contact with me, but uh, you know, so far, uh, same issue. The only thing he said is that he was gonna try to get in contact with the uh, Department of Housing to see if they could try to talk to the owners and see if they can lower the rent down to uh, a lower rent increase. Because the increase that we're having right now is uh, somewhere between 42.7% and 50%. So many of these people that live here um, are living off their social security checks, which is also not enough. And uh, how could this uh, apartment building be called affordable housing when it's no longer affordable. And I don't understand that at the housing department, how could the housing department also not do anything about this? Because, you know, it seems like they, they're they also working with the landlord as well as us. And uh, it's kind of, you know, it doesn't make sense for, for me that the housing department is, is not even doing anything about this. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. If there is any time left, can I just add another note? Which yeah. is, you know, this is, there are legal questions like, you know, has the covenant even expired? Um, if everyone's getting the same rent increase, maybe that's not legal because of the different levels of uh, affordable housing, like high, low income. All those legal minutia aside, I just want people to see that this is a property that under the guise of affordable housing has received millions of dollars of city money and is now, because they are affordable housing, exempt from all the protections in the state of California and are gouging these families' rents, essentially displacing what amounts to two or three blocks of Lincoln Heights in the flats out of the neighborhood, you know, out of their communities. So uh, uh, all, all these legal points aside, this is the violence of gentrification. This is morally unacceptable. Um, and, uh, you know, we really have an obligation as community members to rally around uh, our neighbors here um, and support them in staying in their homes. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers. Sarah, we have a letter for this, right? Uh, yeah, we have a letter and uh, we have a supporting document of the council files, which indicates the uh, federal, the state and federal tax, uh, the bonds that went into this. And I'll just make it quick, but it was built with uh, the CTAC or with the state or federal bonds in 97. And then Huizar passed and uh, put a new motion in in 2016, it was passed in 2017 for 15 million in bonds to refurbish the building. So when they put that money in, it didn't really re-up whatever covenant there was, which is just very strange to me. And it's not a property owner, it's a bunch of nonprofits uh, under one mailing address. So I'd like to make the motion. Uh, to approve the letter. Give me one second. I think we have another public handout. Well, yeah, we, ha we haven't gone to public or board member questions yet. Uh, can, can we just go to board member questions, Vince, real quick? Because the letter is actually the next item. So, um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, then this is just the uh, presentation and then we're going to do the letter, right? Yeah, so just any, uh, because of our time, Restricted any board member um, discussion on this item? Uh, well, actually, there's no action on this item, so we don't really have discussion, do we, Vince? No, no, this was just a presentation. We can okay. move into the letter. So we'll move into the letter now. So if you want to pull up that letter.
And uh, yeah, so the letter uh, is in, um, if you want to describe the letter, Vince, while we're pulling it up. My internet's running slow. Fernie, can you pull it up for some reason? Um, Mr. Tercio's hands up again. Oh, hold on. Okay. Can you see it now? So it's kind so of, it's it may have a couple typos, but let's see. Okay. Letter. Um, supporting document. Give him a little bit of time to read it. I, one of the one of the key points on the letter was to suggest to the uh, Lincoln Heights Tenants Union, but also from the board, is to recently in District One Hillside Villa Apartments was put in the process of intimate domain. That's the first time in a long time that intimate domain has actually been used to purchase a big building similar to the one at Mission uh, Villa. Um, I encourage them to look into the case, which is attached to the letter here, and follow the same process because that apartment has more units in it, I believe, but also falls under two where the city can actually use intimate domain to take over the property and really make it affordable housing and a city asset. And for the, for the first time, actually use intimate domain for the people's benefit since we're in a housing crisis. But we also ask in the letter too that we want an investigation for the harassment of the tenants. And I know one of the tenants already made a report, but we should ask for an in-depth because of the tactics they're using against the, the uh, residents. And also uh, the support that we should ask from our city council or Kevin DeLeon, because I believe it's in his district or it might be in ours, um, that we should ask for funding and legal support. Um, not too long ago, there was funding for lawyers in there and I don't know where that money's went, and that's something that we should work on uh, to figure out if they qualify for any of that type of money. Mm -hmm. And the investigation as well, because the uh, motion, the first motion was by Mike Hernandez in 2007, and then the second one was Huizar and Biscaynow maybe, or Huizar, well, it was a Huizar one for the 15 million, and the terms of that were really uh, kind of strange to me. Um, so I know Fernie might have wanted to add to the letter because we can make, if anybody would like to add anything onto this, including the public or board members, now's the time to make any type of amendments. And then, because I know Fernie had a couple, I would suggest for Fernie to be the last one to add them in and then distribute the letter to the agencies like District 1, Kevin DeLeon, RSO, the mayor's office. Uh, the owner, you know, we can go down the list, but yeah, I mean, I know Fernie has some add-ons. Did you want to talk about them? Yeah, most of the add-ons that I have from my general letter from the committee um, don't really apply to this building because they're exempt from AB 1482, um, which I think we should add on to this letter how these covenants that the city makes up are detrimental and the guise of affordable housing that's presented to everyone in such a pretty picture is actually just violence. Um, and I think that should be added on there. Um, but for now, that's it for me. Um, I do think that if anyone else wants to add anything that definitely should. Um, I know that the the AMCAL buildings over on Avenue 26 in Humboldt, their uh, covenant's about to expire in two years, I was told, um, where they're gonna go up to market rate or whatever. Uh, this is not just like a little problem, this is a major problem. We're about to get slammed and our community is gonna get slaughtered, like just hit majorly in the next couple of years, like this and that. And uh, there's probably a handful of other buildings as well, of mega developments. Um, they need to take immediate action and uh, it's a state thing with that uh, tax money. We need an inquiry into, you know, we need change on that level, state and federal. Um, the city doesn't set the terms of the covenants, right, Vince? They do. Oh, they do? The city does? Part, part of the problem, just to give you a brief history of it, 
part of the problem was 30 years ago, we had these covenants drafted up and they were supposed to last and they were supposed to fix the housing. But if you look at the housing, uh, how the city attacked it in those three decades, they mm -hmm. never addressed it. So now it's accumulated to this. And Fernanda brought up a good point about it being violence towards the, the stakeholdership, the citizens. Well, you got to see what they did next. Instead of going back and analyzing and seeing that it was a complete year, the city actually raised it 50 years. So we're kicking the can two generations down again, and we will have the very same problem we have with it and address it nothing. I want to add one thing. So the uh, nonprofit that this is registered under that owns it or manages it or well, owns it is uh, community. What is it called? Uh, Riverside to Community Corporation. They're the same people that applied for the CTAC loans for Avenue 34 for the $105 million in state bonds. So that's the same person. So that we can get other board members to speak on it or maybe they might have them in. I'd like to make a motion to accept the letter as is, with but also adding on what Fernanda mentioned and what Sarah mentioned, and that Fernanda would be the last person to edit and ship the letter out to the, the recipients. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Okay, so um, any, uh, any other board member uh, comments on this? No, so we'll move on to the attendees. Any uh, public comments on, on this uh, letter, on this item? Please raise your hand. Um, Sarah? Yes. Um, my only comment is, as you look at the uh, heading up there, it says that the uh, neighborhood council recommends the very first thing at, under that, it says, we demand. Oh. Uh, you have to be consistent. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. Amen. Oh, amen. <laughs> Thanks. Amen. Okay, any uh, public attendees uh, have any uh, comments on this letter uh, in support of the uh, uh, Mission Village uh, tenants? Um, really quickly, I just want to translate really quick. Um, Isabel, para comunicar, acabamos de votar para aprobar este una carta a la ciudad en apoyo de lo que está sucediendo en su apartamento y también para recomendar que la ciudad se haga responsable eh, de la falta de, de, de responsabilidad en las leyes que crearon para el edificio de usted. Um, so ahorita estamos discutiendo este la carta y estamos tomando comentario público y luego se va a votar en aprobar la carta. Y muchas gracias. Uh, gracias a usted por comunicar todo lo que ha pasado. Uh, documentar estas clases de cosas es bien importante para nuestra comunidad eh, porque esto está pasando en todo Lincoln Heights. Okay. So, gracias. No, gracias. Yeah, thank you, Fernanda and Isabel and Mr. Tercios and Jesse for presenting and translating. Um, all right, so we're going to move on to the board vote on the letter. We have a first, we have a mo motion from Vince and a second from Benny, and we'll go on a roll call vote. Uh, Secretary Sanchez. So the motion is to approve the letter with the mentioned um, amendments. Sarah? Yes. Ben? I'll go back to you, Chente? Yes. Fernanda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Annalie? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Didia? Yes. Diego? Yes. Gil? Gil Arevalo? No. To you. Richard? Simon. Steve? Yes. <laughs> Alda. Yes. Back to Ben. Yes. And Gil Arevalo. Yes. It's unanimous motion carries.
Did Fernandez? you call Jared? Yeah, we have one more person, Jared. Oh, Jared. Can Jared can vote? Yeah? Yes. It's not a oh. funny item. He can vote. Jared. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, that's uh, unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the Mission Village tenants. Thank you. All right. Thank you, tenants. All right, so we're going to move on to the next item. I'm going to let everybody know the funding item number seven. We're going to table to the, or we're going to put it on the next agenda because we don't have that information yet. So we're going to move on to item six B now. Um, sewer briefing by uh, Bureau of Engineers and uh, LA Department of Sanitation. We have Allison. Uh, thank Allison Arnold. Thank you for sitting on the in the queue for for so long. And then um, I believe some other. We have Allison Teresa. Teresa Monterosa, um, German, Emilio, oh, Emilio Lopez, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, we have five minutes for this too, Sarah, a presentation? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We will try to be as fast as we can. I know we're short on time, so I'll do a quick round of introductions who we have with us today, and then I'll turn it over for the presentation. So hi, I'm Allison Arnold. I'm here with LA Sanitation's Community Outreach Team, and I will be the outreach lead on this project. And then also here with us, I believe we have Emilio Lopez from LA Sanitation. And then from the Bureau of Engineering, we should have Teresa Monterosa. Uh, I believe we also have Edward Arrington and Herman Sanyapa. And Teresa is going to be the one giving our presentation. So I believe she's going to share her screen with us. Yeah, I don't have rights right now to um, share. OK, I think there's a setting that you guys need to give her permission to share with us. OK, one second. Just as she's getting that set up, I'll just let everybody know that you know, as we are short on time, we've got a lot to cover. At the very end of the presentation, there will be a slide up there with my email address. And if there's anything that you have questions about or you want some more information that we didn't get to you know, spend a lot of time on during the presentation, just reach out to me and I can get you any details that you need. Okay. Fernanda, did you promote her to um, host? Okay. I know we also have Herman and uh, Emilio. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh. I can see it, Teresa. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Sorry. I think once I upgraded, you know, I got muted. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Teresa Monterosa, and I'm the project manager for the sewer project called North Artful Sewer Rehab Unit 11, Cardinal Street to Humble Street. Here, the first slide, you see uh, where this project is located. It is in red, mostly it's in Council District 1, and uh, the southern part is in Council District 14. Our sewer is shown here in red, and uh, we start here on Gibbon Street, just south of Main Street, continuing on Gibbon Street, crossing a uh, private property, and then continuing on G Albion Street, uh, just south of Albion uh, Park and going north on Avenue 17, Kildesac, crossing Albion Park, crossing Spring and Broadway. And then we continue on the street Avenue 18, all the way just north of Barranca Street. The anticipated construction time is March of 2025, and it will finish by the end of February of 2027. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so why are we repairing this sewer? This sewer is a 54 inch sewer concrete pipe and it is in a bad condition due to that it is um, about 100 years old. It was built in the 1920s. And now this concrete sewer um, has uh, protective tile layers, as you can see in dark gray that have been fallen out. So now the concrete is being exposed here as shown here in the second uh, photo. And in the third picture, you the sewer right now, the concrete has been deteriorated and corroded. And with that, um, the structural stability has been reduced. This needs to be addressed and repaired as soon as possible because we want to prevent sinkholes. Um, just pictures of how sinkholes look like. 
And these are actual pictures in the city of Los Angeles. So, and then on the bottom, it's kind of an explanation of how this is being processed, but uh, I want to move on. <laughs> okay, how will this sewer be repaired? Uh, we try to show this um, in these pictures. We will go ahead and excavate pits uh, and uh, excavate all the way to our sewers. Um, we have about 10 pits. Um, not all of them are located on the street. And again, not all of them will be excavated at the same time. Um, then after we expose it, the sewer, we will clean it. Uh, so this is the picture of how we clean the sewer. We'll remove any debris that's inside and especially those fallen tiles. And then after it's been cleaned, we will insert a new pipe, uh, pipe segments inside the host pipe. And then with that, it will, um, we will have a now structurally sound pipe. And this is how it will look from the inside. And then we will restore uh, the street by you know, um, filling up the pits and, and putting back the street resurface. Um, OK, so let's start with uh, impacts to the community. Um, the, here shown right now, we're starting from the south, pit one and two dislocated on Gibbon Street, just south of Main Street. Um, those pits uh, will be, um, the, the street will be closed as shown here on the bottom. Uh, so we will close the road uh, around here, this blue area. This is a still conceptual because we are still like in about a 50% design. Um, the sidewalk still will be open uh, on the side and it's just this area, not the whole given street. Okay. Let's continue to the next pits that are on the street. Albion Street, we have pit four and pit five, just on both sides of Avenue 16. Um, again, we will close the road on in those areas. So it will look like here. Uh, again, the sidewalk will still be open. Um, and also, the um, I think there's a parking space just south of Albion Park. Uh, the driveway will be still open. So we will not uh, close those driveways so the parking space will, will still be accessible through Avenue 16. Um, if we continue on Albion Street, going to Avenue 17, the cul-de-sac, this is on the north side is um, Albion Park. We have pit five and pit six. Uh, right now uh, we will close uh, the area of pit five. Um, around pit six, we will close Manota Hall Street um, we will try to have ac limited access to um, Avenue 17 cul-de-sac because uh, north of Avenue 17, there's still more parking space in Albion uh, Park um, or the, I think it's called a recreation center. So we'll still have access to get in there for the, the Albion uh, Park staff and all the community that uses that parking space. Uh, so right now we have it here as at least one lane, but it looks like we need to have two lanes open on this cul-de-sac. Okay, and then we continue crossing Albion Park, and then we um, cross um, also Young Neck Church, uh, which we are, um, you know, we're going to have already meetings with them regarding that. But um, now we have pit number nine that is on Avenue 18, just north of Broadway. Um, here in blue is showing um, the area that we need as a work site area. We will not close the whole Avenue 18. Uh, we will still have at least one lane open and that um, bike lane open as shown here on this picture. And, um, but um, some of the driveways will be impacted here um, next to Young Neck property. And we, we do have um, already reached out to Young Neck, which we will continue to, to mitigate that. Uh, and the last pit is pit nine, located on Avenue 18 by Barranca Street. Um, this is kind of in the intersection, so we'll take that intersection. Um, and so that roadway will be most likely closed. Uh, we're still trying to find out if we need to have a little space open for the bike lane. So uh, right now um, we have it closed, but we may have a little bit of space available for the bike lane that goes around Barranca and Avenue 18. Um, all these pits uh, range uh, to be closed between seven to nine months. Um, okay, so this is showing a conceptual detour of uh, the worksite area for those pits. So if we start from the south, and that I was saying that we're going to close the roadway on Gibbons, um, 
the community still has access to Gibbon Street going through um, Lamar and Cardinal. So um, in San Antonio Warner should be able to access everything there through Cardinal. Um, instead of Gibbons, they have to go through Lamar Street. Now for pit uh, four and five, again, um, the community will be able to access the parking structure at the parking space here south of Albion Park, but they have to access through Avenue 16. So if you're coming from the north, you just have to go through Avenue 18, Mozart, and then Avenue 16. If you're coming from the south, you will come from Main Street, Avenue 17, Mozart, Avenue 16. So this is what's proposed right now. And again, uh, going inside Albion Park, we will uh, work it out to have at least uh, limited access. It's not gonna be completely open, but you should be able to access through the parking space within Albion Park. Um, and um, as shown here, Avenue 18 will be not completely closed. We still have one lane open in this direction. And if you want to go to the other side, there's still Avenue 19 through go through Pasadena Street. Oh my God. Um, I think this is that. What to expect during construction? We may experience some orders during construction, but again, this is normal and we will go ahead and mitigate this to mi minimize impact. There'll be noise and dice and vibration associated with this type of construction because of the excavation. But of course we have mitigation measures in place as part of our specs. All the driveway stretch and delivery access will be maintained at all times. And, um, after 5 p.m. you can con on, on the weekends you can contact LA Sanitation and Environment Customer Care at the WIN 800 number and the schedule is subject to change due to weather and other unforeseen conditions so in case there's too much rain then most likely our contractor won't work because of all the flow inside the sewer um, with us we have the community outreach who will be our contact uh, so we have Allison um, Allison I turn it over to you maybe you want to one second, Allison, before you, you take the, uh, the meeting, I just want to make a note that we're, we're going to be losing Gilbert at eight due to his um, class. And that we also should keep in mind that after we finish this, that we should get a bathroom break because members of the board have asked us to take breaks when the meeting has gone on this long. So just to let everyone know that we're, we're aware and we're keeping the time up. Thank you. Allison? Oh, Alison, you're meet. I was just gonna say, I think this is the last slide of our presentation. Um, and this information, maybe I can share it with Sarah and she can share it with the attendees in case anybody doesn't have a chance to write it down. But my contact details are on here, my phone, my email, if anybody thinks of any questions you might have or things we didn't cover as in depth as you'd like to during this presentation, feel free to please reach out to me and I can answer any questions for you. I know this project is a ways off, but if you wanna also go ahead and preemptively sign up for our email update list, you can also just email me and let me know that you'd like to be added to that list. And once we get closer to the construction date, we will begin sending more regular email updates, which will include you know, the work that we have upcoming, milestones that we make, different impacts, and just general updates about the project. And we'll go ahead and make sure to share those with the neighborhood council as well, so we can distribute the information that way. And again, a lot can change between now and then. So we'll probably be back for a second briefing, you know, closer to the construction start date with maybe some more or some different details. So I hope to hear from all of you. Thank you very much. Allison, I have, I do have a, just an information on the pipe, a real fast one. The original pipe was 54 inches. How big is the new pipe? Teresa, do you have the specs on that? Yes, yeah, so the, um, the new rehabilitated pipe will be smaller because it has to be inserted inside the 54 and it's about as far as we can see from a previous project just south of this sewer, uh, it's 40, around 40, let me see, 43 or 45 inches in, um, in, in height because we, you know, it decreases due to the thickness of the pipe and the grouting of the pipe, which is the little space between the host and the new liner. Thank you. But uh, we went already uh, through the design to make sure this new pipe, rehabilitated pipe will still be able to, you know, um, have the right capacity for the future to come, you know, for the next, for the upcoming sewer capacity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so upcoming sewer capacity has a lot to do with the CASP, any future development. 
Correct, yes. So uh, normally uh, our, oh, we have, hold on, we do have Elisan with us, <laughs> right? Is Emilia still on the, on the, on the panel? Yes. But yeah, so normally, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so they do run a, a software, right, Emilia, to see for the future 20, 40, and 60 years uh, what the capacity will be. But if you want to add anything to it, Emilia, I can go ahead and. No, that's, uh, that's right. So we run, um, when we do our planning reports, we check our big lines for capacity up through um, 2120. Uh -huh. So we have this, this is one of our large lines in the area, and we also have another large line in the area. So the, um, the large line has lines have plenty of capacity for the future. So that other large line's down right next to, uh, it's on the other side of Clover Street. It's on uh, near Lamar, right? That's, I believe so. Yes, yeah, we're having, because I followed the sewer lines on the substructure maps and like across from the fire station on Pasadena Avenue, we've had a, a, the sewer backed up for years on the freeway and the sidewalk's crumbling. And yeah, there's some bottlenecking going on, but um, I just want to mention something that Young Knack property, the part where the pipe goes through the corner right there at Avenue 18, that's city property. Correct, yes. Yeah, so that's city property. So if you have to negotiate with Young Knack right there, and also I wanna say there are a couple uh, lust cases, leaking underground storage cases. One is at the, the makeup place right there at number nine, Gable Cosmetic Company. And then Young Knack Church had a gas station. And so on that city property, there was a, a lust case on the gas uh, tank. So if, how can we be sure? I mean, these are, I have all the maps where the gas stations were and, uh, yeah, they're on the lust maps and stuff. So like if you're doing sewer lines and there's less lust dirt around it getting in the air, is that like mitigated in any way or, or like is it in the sewers or like for instance with Avenue 34, we had uh, decades of chemical dumping in the sewers. Like uh, is there any sort of uh, DTSC or EPA oversight? Well, we, we did uh, run um... For this project we have an environmental clearance so um it, yeah it has to have um but uh, as far as we receive uh from our environmental group was a notice for exemption but um i can go ahead and get uh, our environmental group uh, to answer your question regarding the city property that you said that used to be a gas um station yeah. and how they addressed it but yes we went through this through our environmental group to make sure that you know it's it's cleared you know before we start digging anything so it's like um, an but EIR or eir or a... it's a sequa uh, um, notice of exemption that okay. we received for this project okay. uh -huh. But, uh, but if you want, uh, we will go ahead and get in contact with our mentor group to uh, address your question regarding uh, the Young Neck Church, um, our city property, right? That it was cleared. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I can touch with you guys. Yeah, I can forward that on to you, Sarah, after Teresa has a chance to talk with them about it. Okay, cool. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Um, regarding the mitigation for the disruptions that this project will cause, um, I'd like to know what those mitigations specifically look like. Um, and additionally, is there a possibility for compensation for the people who are living there? Um, because I mean, open sewers is pretty serious stuff. Uh, Stanford just did a study for the sewers in San Francisco and they found monkeypox and other sorts of really terrible stuff in the water. Um, so I, the people that are going to be affected are going to be clearly affected by this project. And I'd like to know if there's any sort of compensation and exactly what the mitigation will look like. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, mitigation to the community um, is again, so I, I uh, was talking about that we try to have access to any kind of public um, parking space that is, you know, within our, within that. And um, right now, uh, I think we're trying to um, contact some of the, we want to have meetings with some of the um, property owners or tenants who live right next to the pits that we're going to excavate. So that is in our agenda. So we having we're going to have already submitted uh, a meeting for Young Neck. Uh, we are going to talk to some of the property owners along Gibbon Street, and mm -hmm. we are also right now in the review with Reckon Park, 
which uh, they are the ones who actually let us know, you know, to make sure that we we have a briefing here to to this neighborhood council. Um, Maybe also a little bit about the um, the odor control. I know that we don't know the exact method yet, but we do have odor control mitigation that we've used on similar projects before that's been very effective. Thank you. We have Jared. Uh, yes. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I have a question about what exactly uh, is used for the odor control. Uh, to, I'm just curious what kind of compounds are in those or what's used. And then my second question is, this seven to nine month timeline, is that, an, is that about the average time for a project like this? Are there any delays due to various delays we're seeing in all sorts of city services lately? And could that, could that timeline change by uh, the time this project actually starts? Yes, yeah, seven to nine months, it, it is varying depending on what, how um, the contractor is going to go ahead and schedule the rehabilitation of these pipe segments. So yes, it, we of course want to give you, you know, the worst case scenario because we don't want to promise something that's going to be like two months and all of a sudden it's six months, right? So we hope that they can, we saw our contractors being very savvy and, you know, because of course they don't want to stay long e either, right? But um, so the seven to nine months is just, again, a worst case scenario. And again, they're not gonna be excavated all at the same time. All those pits are not gonna be done at the same time. They're gonna be in phases. Thank you, Teresa. Now, Gilbert Arevalo. <clears throat> yeah, just uh, from a construction standpoint, uh, you're saying you're going from a 60s uh, the pipe to a 48 inch pipe. Uh, and this seems like a lot of work and everything else like that. Uh, has there been any consideration for any other ways of doing it, such as, uh, Sleeving the, the existing uh, pipe. I mean, you're going like some saying 60 some odd inches to 40 some odd inches. Uh, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure you put a camera down through it and everything else like that, but uh, uh, they do amazing things uh, in sewers these days. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it is not 60, it's 54 to about, I think, 45 or 48 or so. So it's, it's not that, that much uh, smaller. And uh, the reason why we use right now slip lining is because uh, for the structural sound. Right now, we whatever we're putting inside this pipe, the slip liner is going to be 100% like a, this is the new pipe. It won't depend anymore on the host pipe. And this is the most important thing for us that it has to be structurally sound. Thank you. And then Jared? Yes, thank you. Just to follow up on the previous question uh, about the what is used for odor control, and I realize that might be far more detailed than you're prepared to answer uh, tonight. I, I understand that, but uh, I think that's information we would like to have, just to know what what's used to uh, to control the smell, um, mm -hmm. just to be sure that the remedy isn't worse than the problem from an environmental standpoint. Correct. We, we do have this as part of specs. Uh, some of them is uh, chemical injection upstream of the sewage to, you know, mitigate any kind of smell. So they will do it all the way in the beginning. And then, of course, the areas that are open, they will go ahead and suck it, <laughs> suck the air so that, you know, the odors doesn't come out. And it should follow uh, whatever it is, um, uh, you know, per the state, per the cities, you know, a standard. So that's the mitigation they have to uh, so it should not harm, you know, do any harm to any person. Now, uh, yeah, so uh, now if they're somehow smelling without harm, you know, we also we're gonna have um, Alison there with us, try to, you know, um, not any harm to the person, but just the smelling, you know, we'll try to mitigate this by having, you know, um, additional either, um, a, what's it called, air filters and so on. I just want to mention when we talk about smells, it's actually not a smell, it's methane gas and it's a heavy gas and it lays low and it is at the ground level. It doesn't rise yes. up in the air. It's a heavy gas and it's poisonous. That's yes, why we that... have traps, traps to stop the sewer gas from fall, coming up through our drains. So is there, you know, so this is actually like the community is actually eating it. Uh, you know, it's like we're bearing the burden because of new future construction for the cast. So that low-lying gas is going to sit right there in the 
in the Albion area. So, uh, and that's poisonous, you know, it's methane. Uh, so are there gonna be like methane sensors or something? Yeah, yes, of course, especially because they have contractors opening it up and, and you know, digging up there. So they don't want to, you know, so yes. So that they- The only people, like I saw you talk to like the people on Given Street and Young Neck, no, like that's San Antonio Winery, Young Neck Church, you know, they're part of the bid, but the residents are who we're worried about. Well, so um, we really need like people to be aware and residents to be informed. Oh yes, before we do any of this work, I mean, the buildings that we're talking to now are just kind of big picture, you know, what we're talking about right now, but I will personally be going out there and distributing, you know, notices to residents, covering a very broad area, making sure everybody is aware of it before we start doing anything and that they have my information. If they do have any concerns or questions while we're working, people are always gonna be able to reach out to us and we can address that for them. Yeah, it's a huge priority for us to have everybody, you know, in the loop and in the know and we'll do everything we can to keep that going. And also, you know, when we get closer, we can A, come back for a more detailed briefing. B, we'll have more detailed information on what exactly we're going to be using in terms of order control, things like that. And that all that information will be on our construction notices that we'll distribute. So everything will be much more detailed once we have everything kind of ready to go. And we'll definitely be reaching out to everybody. All right, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And really quickly, what language are these notices in? They're usually uh, printed in English and Spanish, although I know that the Young Nat um, congregation is Korean speaking, so we also do have a Korean translator that is available for that as well. Yeah, we Young Nats never Mandarin. there often, they're only there on sun Sundays, but Chinese is the other main language in that area. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Yeah. We'll make sure that everything's covered. For sure. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank you guys. Thank you, uh, Teresa. And uh, yeah, everybody, Allison, um, thank you guys for presenting. Thank you for having us. And again, anybody who needs it, feel free to reach out to me for more information, <laughs> share my information with friends and neighbors so they can also be on the list. And any questions that do come up, feel free to let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Yep. Just one comment. Methane yeah. gas is not poisonous, and it is lighter than air. Uh, no, it's heavier than air. If you put methane no, gas in the balloon, it, 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 it drifts down. It's got a mass of 16. Air has a mass of 32. Well, I'm going you can, you can to... You can fill a plastic bag with uh, natural gas, and it will float. I did a whole art project on methane gas being heavy. But before, before we get... <laughs> okay. into this, into the debate. Gilbert has his hand up and I know he has to leave at yeah, eight o'clock. Gil? Yes, I just want to let you know that I do have to leave, but you won't lose quorum because you have a new member. Hooray. Okay, thank, thank you, Gil. Gil. So and now we also we also have to give a bathroom break. Yeah. Because we're past that time. So are we gonna do a five minute? Yeah, let's do five. Okay, so yeah. we'll reconvene at eight oh five. And the rest of the items are um, quicker items. Thank you, everybody. Okay, just for the record, the meeting went on break at eight and we'll come back at 8.05. Yeah.
Hey, Ben. <laughs> We're back in action, I guess. It's 8.05. Thank you, everybody. It's recording. This meeting is back in order. Tap, tap. Resuming. So, these went... Let's see. Um, we are at item eight, a discussion on. Is everybody back? Sorry, I didn't. Ask. Yeah, we can we can start. We hit eight oh five already. Perfect. Discussion and possible action on letter to LA Housing Department, LADBS, and CD one seeking support for the Benitez family victims of the July nineteenth, twenty twenty two apartment fire at two two one nine North Griffin. Uh, the Planning and Lenny's committee voted to approve a letter of support for the tenants um, to those agencies and city departments reps um, on uh, August, or I forget the date, July something, July 27th. Um, so we have a letter. So that fire, uh, it's a mother, father, and two high school children. Um, the fire happened at night, burnt all their possessions. They were living in the parking lot uh, in a tent under a tarp and for two weeks. And uh, one of Kev Kevin DeLeon's reps came out and visit, visited them and that's the only city official that came. And this is in CB1. And so uh, the community did a GoFundMe, uh, raised $30,000 and it went kind of viral. They got in a hotel room, but there's no protocol for uh, fires in RSO buildings. So uh, in apartment buildings where it affects multiple tenants, People have to wait until the fire report comes through, which could take weeks or months or whatever. And that uh, landlord was very unaccommodating and uh, offered them their keys, their uh, security to deposit back so they would abandon the unit and relinquish it. And so they could boost it back up to market rate or whatever, whenever they fixed it. That's what the letter says. We're asking uh, Kevin DeLeon and the housing department and LAGBS to uh, look into this property and then, yeah help the tenants. So I like I like to make a motion to accept the letter as is. Is there a second? I'll second. Sarah, yes. board member comment and then board, public. Board member discussion. Any board member comments? So not even Kevin DeLeon went himself. It was a representative. But it was in CD C D one. Mm -hmm. There's no board member comment. Okay, any public comments about the Benitez family and the fire? Okay, no. okay so uh, do, the motion is to approve the letter. Do we have a, who moved? <laughs> Sorry. I move and Ben second. Okay, and Ben second. So we'll do a roll call vote on the letter. All right, motion is to approve the letter. Sarah? Yes. Ben? Yes. Chente? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Anneli? Melanie? Yes. Didia? Yes. Diego? Yes. Gil is not here. Richard? Good morning. Steve? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. Jared? Yes. And back to Annalie. Yes. Unanimous motion carries. Motion carries. Step up. Thank you, everybody. Letter will be issued. Now we'll move on to the next uh, planning and land use item. So this was a motion to recommend a letter. Uh, July 27th, uh, pluck meeting. So uh, discussion and possible action on letter support for DTLA garment workers and community impact statement regarding council file 220617 downtown Los Angeles community plan update 2040. So uh, it's a letter of support for the garment workers and assist. Um, and then Nancy had uh, the DTLA garment workers organizer uh, talk about it. And we wrote a letter of support about 
uh, upzoning and adaptive reuse affecting uh, the jobs of uh, people in our community and um, being adapted into uh, luxury housing and how it's um, harmful and uh, not only to the industry, but to families and thousands of families, income, source of income. I'd like to make a motion to approve the letter as is. Is there a is second? There a second. Second. Okay, uh, board discussion. Any board member comments on the, we have the supporting documents. It's a letter and then actually all the council files about the um, downtown community plan. I don't see any board member comments. Okay, any public comments? Raise your hand or press star nine. Okay, we see none. So uh, we'll move to a board vote on the letter. Motion to approve, uh, first by Vince and second by Nancy. Uh, roll call vote, please. Vote is to approve the CIS statement. Sarah? Yes. Ben? Yes. Chente? Yes. Fernanda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Emily? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Didia? Yes. Diego? Yes. Gil is not here. Richard? Uh, Steve? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. And Jared? Yes. Unanimous motion carries. Motion carries. Thank you. Letter will be issued to appropriate agencies. Next, we'll move on to item 8D. Now, uh, I just want to preface this. Kevin DeLeon's office uh, contacted me. They have a new Department of Tenants' Rights and Research. So somebody, they looked into this and uh, are trying to confirm how many families and people were evicted. Okay, so 8 Discussion and possible action on letter to LADBS and CD14 regarding pending demolition permits on two rent controlled homes, boarding house at 1926 and 1932 North East Lake Avenue. This is between Maine and, is it Darwin, Fernando? Darwin? Um, East Lake. East Lake, APN. Okay, so that's APN. LADBS demo numbers, and I have that. So three families evicted. Now that's all that's reported on uh, this one site that has data of uh, Ellis Act. But three families were evicted through January 30th, 2022 Ellis Act. Uh, the assessor says it's a total of three units, 10 bedrooms, five bathrooms. Uh, demo application submitted March 15th, 2022. So they bought it, well, I don't have one they bought it, but they bought it in like September, 2021, immediately Ellis to everybody and then applied for demo on two homes. I have a supporting document with the, uh, one is built in 1895, one is built in 1910, I guess, right? Do I have it on there? No, yeah. I don't, okay, yeah, so um, it's uh, two beautiful homes, uh, sh shared properties with a big gate in front and two old palm trees and the big backyard, big back area. And so the reason that Kevin DeLeon's office is looking into this is that whenever somebody applies for a demo, or to Ellis Act, and they plan on building um, uh, TOC or any sort of high rise, they have to, well, I'm not sure if it ha if they take state tax credits or whatever, but they have to replace the uh, exact rent controlled units that they took off the market and then give those tenants first, uh, whatever, right of return on those units, right to return. And so it's a new, uh, ordinance that's uh, at the state level about uh, tenant protections. So uh, this Kevin DeLeon's office is looking into to it and we're gonna uh, talk about it. So this letter is saying, these are historic homes, but it's also saying uh, <clears throat> the these people were Ellis acted, the community was not alerted, uh, all that stuff. Uh, we need to have a dialogue about the uh, destruction of our uh, communities, right? I'd like to make a motion to accept yeah. the letter as is. Is there a second? Oh, we have Jared. Yes. Um, 
I have, I just have uh, two questions. Um, one is substantive and one is uh, just a typo. Uh, the first is, um, I, I looked this up and uh, the permit was, it looks like the permit was granted on the 4th of August. So is that something that may want to, should be addressed in the letter? And that's not, I don't have an opinion. I just don't know if that's something that should be addressed. This, this letter was, uh, I mean, the letter itself, it's sort of like quickly written or whatever. Um, the, uh, it was actually it went through the council like, or through the committee in July. And so uh, we had it on our last agenda and then that meeting did make quorum, right? Um, so there are multiple permits. Uh, there are three demo permits, I think. Uh, it's, it's a boarding house and then a single SFD. And then it's a back area. Um, so they're still pending. So you're saying you just checked and it was on uh, August 4th, huh? So Kevin DeLeon's office just got back to me right now and they're on the horn with uh, LADBS. So uh, yeah, so this uh, property owner called in on the last meeting um, or the developer investor. So this is the same person that bought all of the bungalows across from Lincoln Park. Um, uh. Yeah, so, uh, and those are not, uh, anyway, I, I don't wanna talk about other properties they own, but they have investment properties going across Lincoln Heights and they called in on the last meeting and it seems as though they're targeting their housing towards USC because the person stated that pretty much. Yep. Yep, and so uh, I did a lot of research on the property, trying to find historic figures that live there and all this stuff and uh, uh, yeah, so, um, I just put some of it in this file. Uh, that's the 1895 house. And uh, that's the, oh wait, no, wait. yeah, that's the boarding house, which actually goes farther back, which it's kind of a small boarding house, right? Uh, but that's a boarding house. And uh, yeah, and this is one of the first houses on the tract, well, maybe the third one on the uh, east, so, what was it called the East Los Angeles terminus tract and that's one of that's Griffin's original the original tract of, of Lincoln Heights and it goes all the way to uh, the river it has uh, uh, the Albion area and then it goes to uh, De uh, whatever the other street is <laughs> so um, oh, I, 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 yeah I, I get it I mean I'm all I, I, I guess my question is is since it looks like at least one of the demolition permits was granted already is that something that should be addressed in a letter I I'm going to look deeper into it uh, I didn't know that it was just granted I thought they were reviewing because they have to review like each thing in a checklist type of thing you know it's not our HPOZ is also so small so it doesn't even have to go through that um, but uh, yeah Eastlake you know, that's your street. <laughs> I know, I know exactly where these are. Yeah, and that's why, that's why I'm wondering why, you know, it's just interesting. I, I, I guess my, my only point on this really is that if Council Member De Leon is already, is, his office is getting back to you and saying, oh, we're looking into it. And then on the other hand, the permit's okay. already been granted. That well, might I, be something we want to address. Yeah, I, they're, they're different departments, but like, like um so so like the zoning for the east side the east uh, Adelante Re Adelante uh, redevelopment plan that's all south of Maine, and now they're jumping north of Maine and taking uh, single family residential properties and then doing uh, POCs and stuff. So it's like a major concern. We uh, issued a letter at one of our last meetings. Um, they're jumping Maine. And they've already jumped the tracks and so it's kind of like uh it's alarming because this property is really uh it's really beautiful because it's two two big homes connected you know that sort of lincoln heights didn't use to have fences you know it's just a community type property so behind Give davis blueprint <laughs> so given the age of this property could we file for historic preservation 1885 is pretty old. It's not in the HPOZ, but that would just be, that's inconsequential. It's like, you have to find like a historic person that lived there or on its own uh, architectural merit or whatever. Now it doesn't really have a renowned architect. It was built by uh, the original guy himself. who was like a sheep 
dealer mm. in 1995. And then he sold it to uh, an, uh, an Italian family and then this lady and her husband, and he was a taxi driver. And uh, I couldn't, I just have to find more about them. Um, but that's, you know, all we got. I mean, it's just like, the, we're the oldest neighborhood in LA and we don't have an HPOZ that is like, it's like half the size of Highland Park, which is ridiculous. So this is the oldest area. This 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 tract should all be HPOZ, in my opinion, because it's the oldest tract in East Los Angeles. So we have a, we have a motion. Are we going to continue or are we? Gonna... Well, this is the second to last item. So we have a motion. We have a second. Any board member comment on the thing? Sorry, I'm talking so much. No board member comment. I I recommend everybody go down there and drive past it. Yeah, I walk my dog here around here almost every day. Um, yeah, just a high rise in the middle of all these houses, just an awkward area as well. And it's the construction is going to be detrimental to everyone living there. <clears throat> Any attendees have any comments on this item? No? Okay, so we're gonna go for- I would just also recommend that just- uh -huh. Sorry, I just, it was the I typo know. for residents. Oh yeah, no, the letter will be like edited so it's proper. <laughs> it was like- Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, any of those formalities. Yeah, yeah we have a public hand up. Yeah. Daisy? Hey, thank you. I have a question in reference to that letter. That letter, um, can you reiterate what information is it gonna have regarding those two uh, lots? Well, the letter itself, because it's what, like the letter itself will be edited. So it's like more pro. We don't have much time on the council. Like, yeah, so, uh, we have to, for instance, we're not trying to talk to Kevin DeLeon about how this is a historic property right now because that's not really his jurisdiction. Um, we're talking about this like onslaught right now of tearing down our single family homes, which are rent controlled multi, they're single family homes, but it's like got, it's a multifamily parcel, right? So it's got a lot of apartments. They're turning them into these apartment buildings, right? So it's like, saying if you want to do this because it's a trajectory that keeps getting worse and worse Vince can you elaborate on this the letter the letter basically is going to go out in opposition of issuing the permits for demolition one because of how they approach the Ellis Act and that's what uh, Kevin de Leon has his team working on right now to see if there was an actual state violation the people were uh, were approached, but they ended up leaving. But the question is, did they get proper notice on the Alice Act? And so the owners are responsible to give, you know, notices of eviction or notices of deals that are going to be made, and then it's got to be registered. If the property is under RSO, they have to be registered with the city under the the Cash for Keys project. So. It's an investigation by by Kevin, but I think it has to be done too by uh, Cedillo. I think it's in Cedillo's district. But whoever does it, it's good. This letter is just a, uh, asking, well, opposing it, and making sure that these things be highlighted in the investigation. It's that any new development has to replace the units that it destroyed, and that it has to offer them at first to the people who were kicked out. And unfortunately, Thank you. CID. Yeah, HCID only um, when they talk to the previous owner, the owner only has to give two years of like bank statements to show or, you know, to show that they were being paid or whatever. But I know personally, uh, my neighbors, there's my neighbors, like I was told that uh, it was a multi-generational family that lived in this RSO property, which had 10 rooms and five bedrooms and it was technically three units. And many of them were seniors and they had to move out of state and they're totally screwed. So uh, I have to tell talk to CD14 about all that. That's called a vote. Yeah. 
Wait, the motion is to approve the letter. Sarah? Yes. Ben? Yes. Chente? Yes. Fernanda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Annalie? Melanie? Yes. Didia? Yes. Diego? Yes. Richard? Come on. Steve? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. Jared? Yes. And back to Annalie. Yes. Unanimous motion carries. carries. All right, so one of the last items we're coming up to right now, and this is similar to the previous one, but we got no feedback. So the last one was CD14, this is CD1. So this is uh, kind of goes with the sewer project. It's discussion and possible action on letter to LADB, LADBS and CD1 regarding pending demolition permits on two rent controlled homes at 1779 and 1781 North Albion Street. Um, two families evicted through uh, November 7, 2017 Ellis Act. Total two units, four bedrooms. Demo applications submitted September 14, 2017 pending applicant Arenas Development Inc. So I found out this person's, the, well, I don't know, if, the president of the uh, Montebello Chamber of Commerce or whatever. But um, so the reason that the city has been sitting on this demo permit for so many years is because the city has plans for this property and it's in uh, this document, which it's in the supporting documents. It's been identified as like a uh, stock, like potential stock for multifamily residential high density. Well, projects. And so when I read that, it said that the applicant has no plans for any um, low to or medium income units. It's all um, market rate. So these houses have been sitting rotting for the past couple of years, uh, past five years, next to Albion, uh, next to Downey Park, Albion Riverside Park. And uh, they own even the house right there on the edge of the park, which people still live in. There's, I think, three little houses. So he owns a good chunk of that whole corner. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of fallout from this new Albion Riverside Park, but the city's kind of in, it's like, it's like there's demolition by neglect happening, right? That's before. The person also, this, pro, this property was in REAP. It was in REAP and then he fixed it. And then he applied for the demo program. So the tenants had fixed properties for a couple of years and then he applied for the demo permits in Elista. So it's just very strange. When something's in REAP, that's when the city takes it, basically all the rent payments go to the city, go to an escrow account and they don't go to the owner until the owner fixes everything. So it's like for all those violations, it's like then the city's working with the person and they're fire dangers, just like on Pasadena Avenue. And these are some of the oldest houses in Lincoln Heights, uh, even if they look like shacks. And these properties go deep. They have big, big, big backyards all the way to Downey, to the baseball field at Downey Park. I'd like so, to make a motion. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to accept the letter as written. I second. Diego seconds. Yeah. All right. So the first and second, any board member discussion? Did we do that yet? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, any board member comments? Johnny Park? Don't see none. All right, so any public comments on these two rotting houses at Downey Park that were nice five years ago? Don't see none. No, okay, so we're gonna move to a board vote here on the, the letter uh, opposing the demolition. Motion is to approve the letter, Sarah. Yes. Ben. Yes. Chente. Yes. Fernanda. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Benny. <coughs> yes. Annalie. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Didia. Yes. Diego. Yes. Richard. Steve? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. And Jared? 
Jared? Yes. Okay, so motion carries. Yes, motion you. carries. Oh, oh, three taps means meeting, meeting ends. Okay, so item nine, my internet was broken all day. So I didn't get to do that. And I promise next week I'll have double those minutes. And uh, now we move on to 10 non-agenda public comment, the final public comment. If there's anybody from the public who wants to talk about something not on the agenda, you have two minutes to speak. Please raise your hand or press star nine. Okay, we, seeing none, uh, we will move on to Vince. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Oh, yeah, someone to jump. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. 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 Oh, I don't hear aye, any aye, aye. abstentions. Don't hear any. The meeting officially <laughs> ends at 831. Meeting is Thank adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank, thank you, you. The for attending. thank you jerry thank you all right and all right jerry, thank you everybody we'll get you the welcome packet out so that you can uh, begin the training yes and, um, Mom, welcome jared thank, thank you. you thank you everybody welcome jared everybody you rock Love you i have guys. a question i'm a member of the public and this was like my first meeting here with you guys how can I go about getting more involved, such as like what Jared did, did and how you have that candidate uh, pending to join? Fernanda? There's a couple of things. You can either apply to be a part of the council or you can join any of our committees by just showing up to the meetings. Um, if you email me at fernanda.sanchezlhnc at gmail.com. I'm more than happy to send you all the information we have. Fernando.Sanchez with an S or a Z? With a Z. And where, what, at, what is it that you said? LHNC L at gmail.com. LHS? NC, like Lincoln Heights neighborhood. NC. Got it. Dot C O M. Yeah, so Correct. Again, again that's Fernando.Sanchez. L H N C at gmail.com. At gmail. Dot C O M. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good, good night. Have a good night. Bye. We'll see you at the next committee meeting. <laughs>